After all this time, you're still wondering why your badminton smashes is pathetic as your love life? Well, today I'm going to tell you the five mistakes that are ruining your badminton smash. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and watch until the end of this video. The first mistake that you're making that's ruining your badminton smash is you're using too much shoulder. Now, it may feel like you're generating a lot of strength with your shoulder, but you have to remember that the racket is super light. If you were throwing a boulder, maybe that would work because the power generated from your shoulder would carry that momentum forward and the momentum would increase and increase. But with something as light as a badminton racket, the momentum doesn't carry forward as much. So all this power you're generating with your arm, you're losing instead of focusing all that power in a small place. So the correct way to generate power is to focus all our contact into a small area instead of wasting all our energy in the pre-swing here or swinging after. So that's why we have to use more of our forearm, wrist, and fingers to generate power because that makes our power generation more concise rather than our shoulder. First, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to swing and hit a badminton smash with your shoulder. So the way I was just smashing, I was using a lot of shoulders. Sure, it looks like an okay smash, but I'm using so much energy. I'm using 100% energy to get a 70% smash. Instead, if we use our forearm and our wrist and our fingers, we want to put out the energy that we put in. So we want to put out 100% of the smash with the 100% of the energy that we put in. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like to keep our smash more concise using forearm, wrist, and fingers. The second mistake that's ruining your badminton smash is that your contact point is too far behind you. Now just imagine this, look. If your contact point is over here and you're swinging, and once you hit here, where is all your power generation? Imagine you're throwing a ball. Every time we throw a ball, the most optimum point to release is up here because all our momentum and power we generated moves forward. But if we release back here, we barely use any of our body to generate that power and we're only using a little bit of our arm. So that's why you're probably not generating enough power and enough angle in your smash. Your badminton swing is too far behind like this. <sighs> <sighs> So you'll see in that demo, because I was hitting it so far behind me, I really had to curve my arm on the hit. And there's just no power generation in that. If anything, that will cause more injuries. What we want to do is hit in front of us, like we're throwing a ball forwards and drive all of our momentum forwards, kind of in a 45 degrees right in front of us. Because first, this is where the angle of our smash racket will be facing. Second, this is where, once we've driven forward with our elbow, where we can release all of our energy in our swing to generate that smash power. So look like this. The third mistake you're making that's ruining your smash is your off balance or moving while you're in the smash. Now, many of you, especially beginners, like to run and hit at the same time. The problem with that is that you're not planted enough to properly generate power. Now for those of you that don't know how to jump and smash yet, what I would recommend is you always first stand stable before you hit. That way you can properly generate the power from your legs throughout your body into your arms, into your wrists and fingers to hit. Now for those of you who can jump, you still have to remain stable throughout the jump. You don't want to be off balance, so you have to move. Make sure you're stable before the jump, and even in the jump, remain stable as you hit that smash. If you want access to a free online badminton academy with personal coaches and custom training plans, then click the link down below. Mistake number four that's ruining your badminton smash is you're not creating enough angle on the smash. And look, when we're smashing, it doesn't matter how hard you smash if we're smashing it super high. Why? Because when you're smashing it high, the area that they have to hit is so small. It's all around this area. They don't have to move their body. They don't have to move their racket. What's hard about receiving a smash is not how fast it travels. It's how fast it makes you have to move. 
So when you have angles in your smashes and variations, high, low, you have angles, forward, the opponent has to move so much and that's what causes them to miss a smash because they're not in position fast enough. So you really wanna focus on hitting more angle than power, angle before power. First you get your angle and then you can learn how to generate power on your angle. Now in order to hit angle, it's very important that we get a very high contact point in front of us and we really wanna use our wrist to clip it down and follow through all the way to create that angle and it's gonna look something like this. The last mistake you're making that's ruining your badminton smash is you don't have enough time to swing. Many of you move to your position too late so that when the bird comes, you don't have enough pre-swing to generate that power and you're just hitting it at an unoptimal point in your swing. Oftentimes, it looks like this when you're making a mistake. You'll see in those smashes that I swung very late because my racket was down and I didn't have enough power to generate power in that swing. But what we want to do is instead, we really want to hold in position ahead of time so that we have time to pre-swing and generate that power. So this is what it looks like to hold before your smash. Those were the five mistakes that are ruining your Banton Smash. If you want to see more videos like this, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know down below what tutorial you want to see next.